Welcome to the Wilderness Season Podcast. I'm your host, Sherry Ward. I have a passion to bring hope and breakthrough to those experiencing the toughest times of their lives. In this podcast, we will give you critical insights and revelations as I interview people just like you, those who have been right where you are and understand exactly what a wilderness season is all about. It's real, it's raw, it's practical. Come join the conversation. Welcome to the Wilderness Season Podcast. Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Wilderness Season. Today we have Rob Miner on the show. Rob has been a mentor and a teacher to students for over 13 years. Rob answered a call from God encouraging him to take a leap of faith and start a brand new journey. He was inspired to write a story of a modern day Abraham as a metaphor for our lives today. Rob is definitely no stranger to the wilderness. With over five years of experience in the wilderness and probably a whole lot more, he has some incredible God stories we will be sharing today on this episode. Join me today and welcome Rob Miner to the show. Hi, Rob. I'm so excited to have you on the show today. I knew that the minute that we connected, it was just Mm -hmm. something that I was like, yes, he gets it. So welcome. I definitely do. It's nice to talk to someone who else gets it because (laughs) when you're going through the journey, often most don't, so... Well, I'd love to welcome you to the show today, and I want you to talk and start with a little bit about your story, and I know your story is so big that you can start wherever you want, basically. (laughs) All right. Well, I'll just start with the context. Uh, I first received a call to full-time ministry almost 23 years ago, so uh, you you could argue that the whole journey has been uh, a wilderness. I like to think of it from a large scale and a small scale. Uh, God called Abram when he was 75 years of age, and there was a 25-year journey attached. And to some degree, that has been my story. Uh, And there has been ebbs and flows. I've had some amazing seasons um, where I've had tremendous breakthrough and just wonderful, wonderful times. But uh, as the scriptures say, we go from glory to glory, and I've had lots of valleys and I've had lots of mountain peak experiences. But uh, for the sake of clarity and simplicity, I'm just going to focus on the latest wilderness season, which has really been, you know, some six, seven years in the making. Um, I I don't consider myself in the wilderness season now. I believe that I've crossed over into my promised land. (laughs) Yes, yay. That's when you Uh, go, yes, it's finally here. Still contending for it. (laughs) Still contending for it. That's a whole other story for another day. But um, um, I'm going to start my story today in October 2012. Um, I had been married for seven years. And uh, it was on that day that my wife uh, asked for a divorce and uh, took me on a journey of about a year to a year and a half of, of processing through that. Um, difficult for many reasons. One was because I really believed that God was going to restore my marriage. Um, and I really put all my hope and my faith in that. And that didn't happen. Um, but coming into uh, 2014... Once my divorce finally processed, um, I just made a decision that I was going to give myself the liberty to date, to learn how to date, and to date a lot, and <laughs> to learn how to do it, because I never really <laughs> given myself the liberty to do that. You know, I'd always been kind of a good religious boy, and I'm like, you know, let's see how that worked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's let's have some fun. Um, and how did so, that go? <laughs> well, you know, I I did date more that year than all the years combined prior to marriage. It it was fun. It was frustrating. Um, but at the end of the year, uh, I had an experience. It was a Monday morning and I was just talking to God about it. I'm like, it, it's felt a lot like running on a treadmill. Like I've been doing lots of stuff. I didn't go don't really feel like I'm going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's been fun, but it's been just as frustrating. It's been fun. And I felt like he put on my heart to let go of Dean and to trust him. Um, was that hard? Yes, yes and no. I mean, the timing was perfect because I had pretty much come to the place where I'm like, I am tired of this. So (laughs) in a sense, I was like, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Okay, I will. Um, So, I mean, probably five minutes later, 10 minutes max, I'm getting ready to go because it was a Monday morning. I was going off to work 
and I take my phone out of my charger, and it's like a scene from the movie The Matrix, if any of you have ever I seen The, the Matrix. Matrix. Yeah. And there's a scene where the moment the phone hits Neo's hand, it it buzzes. Well, the moment it hit my hand, it goes, did he, did he, did he? And I, I look down, and there's three texts from three different single women. Actually, I should say two single women and my ex-wife, uh, all within a second of each other. <laughs> And I'm like, this is uncanny. I mean, I, it's, 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 I'll get maybe one or two texts before seven o'clock in the morning from a single woman in a given year. <laughs> and here I have three in the span of one second. Right when the he moment told it you. touches my hand. Yeah. And right when he told you that too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is like five minutes after that experience. So yeah. I knew God is speaking, particularly because I'm looking at the time and the time of the three texts was 6.33 a.m. And I'm like, I know that significant i know there's a bible verse something 633 and i i even was like i th- i think it's matthew 633 but i had to rush out the door so at this point i'm in my car i'm driving and i'm like matthew 633 matthew 6 man i know that's <laughs> and then after about 10 minutes of scratching my head i go oh seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added as well. Oh wow, wow! Yeah, I mean that's how I thought, that's how I yeah, felt too. I'm yeah. like, wow, that's God speaking. So, did you feel like it was a test? Like God said no more, and then boom, all these people came to you? Uh, not yet. At that point, it was just it was a wink. It was like God saying, "Okay, that experience you had this morning, that was me." And okay. the three texts at six thirty three was my confirmation. Um. So now go on this journey, lay it down and trust me. So um, over uh, the next 40 days, ironically, I just started a 40-day journey that, that God inspired me to go on, uh, which I called 40 Days of Honoring Myself and All I Think, Say, and Do. Which Ooh, is I really, like that. I like that. was that. powerful. It was one yeah. of the most powerful 40-day seasons of my life. And really what it was was 40 days of standing on God's Word uh, in my thoughts, in my words, in my actions. Um, there's an experience I, I told my car and I had to buy a new car. And God put it in my heart to buy the more expensive car. And I'd always been a cheap skit. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to do this. And he's like, you made a commitment to honor yourself. So I'm like, wow, That's this great. is I'm really being tested. So ironically, this was, I, I did not know this when I started, but the 40th day of that journey was my 41st birthday party or my 41st birthday oh wow and he inspired me to end my journey by um hosting a birthday celebration which i hadn't done in over 20 20 some years wow. in fact the last birthday celebration i'd had was when i was like 12. at some point i had developed a judgment against my birthday and just didn't want to celebrate Wow. And all the way through high school and college, I mean, my birthday, I pretty much just spent alone. I didn't tell people about it. It was depressing. It was cold. It was rainy. So, um, and it was powerful. It was an amazing, amazing experience. Um, such a blessing. So the next day, uh, which was a Sunday, um, mm-hmm. I was just filled with hope. I'm like, this is the beginning of the rest of my life. Like God is like, getting ready to we're doing it. blow up and it is time to come into my promised land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Little did I know. No. Little did I know. I think that's true for all of our listeners. You think you're going to get there and it's like, ah, oh, no, we're not there yet. That was the beginning of the journey. I mean, I, I, I could say the beginning of the journey was going through my divorce. And in some respects that was more painful than the wilderness that would follow. But it was really more of the context. It really more set the stage for this. Mm-hmm. So as I was walking to church that day, I mean, literally almost the moment I walk in, uh, this guy who I knew to be very prophetic sees me from a distance and he walks straight up to me. He's got this goofy grin on his face. And he's like, you're going to want to brace yourself. Uh-oh. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah like, no, no, wrong, wrong word. This yeah, is yeah, my yeah, breakthrough. Yeah. There's yeah, no yeah, brace yeah. yourself. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So he's like, I feel like the Lord is saying, like Abraham, I am going to send you to a foreign land. But first, you're going to have to lay down your Isaac. Wow. There is a breakthrough coming later this year, but the big breakthrough is coming the next year in 2016. So on one hand, I was intrigued by the Abraham thing. Right. Because to some degree, I felt like I'd been on this Abrahamic journey for almost 20 years. Yeah, I can see that. 
So I'm like, now you're starting to laugh. Uh, <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, was that just the precursor? <laughs> right. Oh my gosh, if that was the precursor. <laughs> but what really blew me away is when he said, but first you have to lay down your Isaac. I'm like, God, I just lost my marriage. You know, you just told me like 40 days ago to lay down your Isaac, which I did, by the way. Or you you didn't say lay down your Isaac. You said, I want you to lay down your plans for Dane, which I did. I've been obedient to that. Right. So I'm mystified. I'm confused. I don't know. What is I'm my mad. Isaac? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but there's a breakthrough coming later this year. So there's hope in that. So were you able to figure out what the Isaac was then? I had no idea. Okay. No, I was just mad because I'm like, my marriage was my Isaac. And there was a prophetic journey related to that too. It's not like I just made it, married some pagan girl. I mean, I waited on God. There, There's a prophetic journey related to that. So no, this didn't make any sense at all to me. Right. Um, so over the next three months, I had three more prophetic words, about one a month. And each said about the same thing, which is essentially, God says that you are in a refiner's fire right now, but take heart because your breakthrough is coming. And it was. I mean, those next three, four months that followed were very difficult, very challenging in many different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in May, uh, the same guy who gave me the original word in January mm-hmm. comes back to me again. He says, the Lord showed me that you're crowning. Like you're you're <laughs> yeah. ready to give birth. Weird, weird word for a guy. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I understood the spiritual yeah. meaning of that. Well, you even know what that means. Most guys don't even know what that means. <laughs> That's kind of scary. Yes, I know what that means. Yeah, well, you know I'm into the prophetic, so I I understand the terminology. Um, But um, that's exactly what happened. So, gosh, maybe three weeks later, I met this woman, and and it was was love at first sight. I mean, I experienced this maybe once or twice before in my life, but never a mutual love at first sight. I mean, it it was like the moment I looked into her eyes, I'm like, wow. Like, I could see <laughs> that she was feeling the same thing I was. Wow. And then after we started dating, you know, we she said the same thing. And she's like, I knew right away that you were the one. Or at least she thought she knew. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, we two, three months in, we were both convinced we were going to get married. And for the most part, that Isaac word was on the shelf. You know, yeah, that's I, one to really put on the show. I have no <laughs> interest to show it on that. I'm like, no, God said the breakthrough is coming in 2015. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good enough. You're picking for now. and choosing yeah. what part of that word you want. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I can see that. But after about four or five months, it became clear and clear something was wrong. And I, I didn't know what it was. It was like a splinter in the back of my mind. Where I'm like, this isn't going to work. And I couldn't figure out why. I just. It's like no matter how much I prayed about it, it wasn't, something wasn't right. And so after about six months of dating, I started sensing, I, I, this is the Isaac, I need to lay this down. Oh, wow, that must have been really hard. Well, yeah, particularly because I really liked her. I mean, it, it was everything I had been looking for in a relationship, except there was a splinter in my brain, and I'm like, I, this, I'm not... I'm not in love with her. I don't know why I'm not in love with her. I should be in love with her. Mm-hmm. Um, so over the next few months, I tried breaking up a couple times, but I didn't really want to break up with her. I kind of got the idea that the big breakthrough was the resurrection. So if I break up with her, yeah. we get back together yeah. the next week. Hey, that's the resurrection. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that's how we feel, though, with our Isaac. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, yeah. okay, I'm going to hurry up and lay it down. Because I want you to hurry up and resurrect it. <laughs> and sometimes... Which, by the way, for our listeners, doesn't work. You know, yeah. just throw it out there now. Yeah. And I think when you lay it down, you have to totally walk away mm-hmm. and, and expect that it may not come back yeah. exactly the way you think it is or even in the timing of it. I really do yeah. believe that God blesses us later for that. But yeah. sometimes it can be five or ten years later. And I don't want to discourage anybody from saying right. that, but... If we go in saying we're going to lay this down, yeah, only to know that we want to pick it up right away. I don't know that that, you know, that's not the heart behind it, you know. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, all I can say for anyone who's discouraged right now and they're like, when's the happy ending? <laughs> the happy ending is interwoven throughout because the silver line is 
you do experience God in ways that you just don't when you're not in the wilderness. Yeah, so, absolutely. Phenomenally beautiful story and extremely painful at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so let me get back to the story okay. just to give you a, some, a glimmer of hope. So um, eventually I did break up with her after about a year. I finally wow. laid down the relationship and, um, and I had peace and I had joy. And I'm like, this is it. I did it. I laid down my Isaac and I feel good about it. And, but for the next month, I'm still like getting back into learning about dating. And, and at the time I had been working on this vision for ministry, uh, which I called 40 beliefs and practices for renewing the mind. Ooh. And it, it you was got some good titles there on different. <laughs> oh, it was, it was great. I mean, it was ready for liftoff. In fact, I had gotten to the point where in one day I had two women just about jump out of their shoes saying, you have to travel around the world sharing this message. Wow. That's what I was thinking. Uh, <laughs> uh, God had, had something different in mind, however, um, yeah. lo and behold. So it's gosh, funny how he does that, huh? He does that a lot. So about three days later, um, I had this experience where I woke up. I, I, I don't even say I woke up. It was like four o'clock in the morning. It was almost like Jesus was staring at me. You know, that kind of stare is like uncomfortable. Like stare. he wants something from oh, me. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. he's trying to say, and I'm, and I'm like, what? 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 what do you want? <laughs> and the gist was, I want you to lay it down. Like, I want you to lay down your plans for Dana. I want you to lay down your, your plans for ministry. I want you to lay it all down. And I'm like, what do you yeah. want from me? <laughs> I have laid it down. Yeah. I, I, I'm walking. I mean, I'm walking the Christian life. I'm doing the thing. What am I doing wrong? What do you want? I mean, for two yeah. hours, I'm just like, what do you want from me? What yeah. am I doing wrong? I don't, I don't understand. Right. Cause you had laid it all out. You I felt like you felt like you laid it all out. It's like, but dead, be dead. <laughs> I had spent the next month or so ready to spring out of the gates, and I'm like, I'm I'm going to have that big breakthrough in 2016. I'm going to meet my future wife. My ministry is going to bloom, and and so here he is again. I want you to lay it down. And I think part of that, if I can interject, is that yeah. when we get a prophetic word, sometimes we want to help God. Oh yeah. To make it happen, yeah. you know, instead of waiting on Him. We want to go, oh, yeah, okay, that's the date of my breakthrough. So, therefore, I need to do X, Y, Z. I need to do my ministry yeah. for God and get out there and make it happen. And it's that yeah. make it happen performance thing, I think, that has to die, too. Oh, yeah. It, 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. And it will die. It will die. <laughs> so, um, so, finally, after about two hours of wrestling with God, I concede. And, uh, and then I, I get up and I had a routine where I would take a book, my journal, and I'd go to Starbucks every morning and I would spend an hour or two with God. It was my summer vacation. I'm a teacher, so I was in a rush. And that morning, the only book that really drew my attention was a book that I had actually written the year before my wife asked me for a divorce, or I had published it that year. A book called And Their Eyes Were Open, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of a theologically theological comparison between the Old Covenant and the New. So I go to Starbucks that morning and I, for whatever reason, decide to go to the last chapter of the book, which was chapter 40. Oh, interesting. And I'm reading about Jesus' 40th day in the wilderness. And it's uncanny, the way I describe it in that 40th chapter, it's uncanny how similar it sounded to what I experienced that very morning, just like an hour ago. Wow. Yeah, wow. that's what I was thinking. I'm like, this is, this is a trip. So I'm like, okay, so I'm reading through the 40th chapter. I, I'm reading about... Jesus' 40th day in the wilderness, in the 40th chapter I wrote, called And Their Eyes Were Open, mm -hmm. why do I have the uncanny feeling this is the 40th day since I laid down my Isaac? Oh, wow. Wow. So I pull out my phone. I, you know, Google a 2016 calendar. I go to the date that I broke up with her. Yeah. And count 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 36, 37, 38. Oh. oh. <laughs> 40. <laughs> I mean, I get, every time I talk about that, I get emotional because, it, you know, I've had some pretty profound moments with God, but that was about as close to the burning bush experience that Moses had as it gets. Yeah. Because it wasn't just the realization that that was the eyes that God had called me to lay down. But that when I wrote that book, 
and was writing the final chapter of that book. God was writing that through me, preparing the stage for this experience. That's what turns that me out. <laughs> That's what turns me out. How he timed yeah. everything at the right time oh. to all be that convergence oh on that day at that time at that. 40, 40, 40, which wow. is the number for trials in the Bible, yeah. which is 40 days in wilderness. Yeah. So it, it, I'll tell you this. It felt so much like the burning bush experience in the Bible that I literally instinctively looked down at my feet because in the story, oh yeah, God says to Moses, Moses, take off your sandals for the ground that you are standing on is holy ground. And I tell you, I never wear sandals. I don't even wear sandals to the beach. I mean, I, I don't even know why I own a pair of sandals. Never, ever. I was wearing sandals that day. I have no idea why I put on sandals. I was freaking out. I was totally, I mean, tears strolling down my eyes in, in the Starbucks. Starbucks. Yeah. And I'm like, my God, I know what comes after, you know, after Abraham laid down his Isaac, I know what comes next in the story. Yeah. The angel yells and he says, stop. Right. And so at that moment, I'm like, God, God's going to resurrect this relationship. Yeah. Which felt crazy because I'm like, I tried breaking this off. I mean, for seven, eight months, there was a splinter in my brain. I'm like, this isn't, this isn't working. Right. Well, the next day I had another profound experience where I felt like he was asking me to go to the mall and buy an engagement ring. And, wow. And I, wow. <laughs> and I felt, and there's a long story, I won't get into how I, I sense this, but I felt like he was saying, when you buy that ring, you are going to part your Jordan River. Wow. Well, I, I knew what that meant. Yeah. Yeah. And after 20 years of walking with God, I'm like, if you're saying this is my pathway to my promise land, I'm all in. Well, of course. Yeah. It's what you wanted, <sighs> too. How could I not? Yeah. How could I not? Wanted. It was scary. Yeah. Because I'm like, this is nuts. You know, what if I go back to her and I still feel the same way? This right. is nuts. And now you have a ring. So I eventually, <laughs> I went to the mall, walked around for two hours because I'm like, this is nuts. Finally, I found a $1,300 ring on sale for $500. Wow, half off. <laughs> and you, and you more than half off. And you had a month to return it. So, oh, really? Yeah. So I'm I've like, never okay. heard of a ring you can return. That's go so figure, funny. Yeah. Go figure. So I did. I bought the ring. Wow. Driving home going, I am, I've completely lost my mind. So the next day I go to my mailbox and at this point I'm journaling three, four, five times a day because revelations just fall in like right. Right, right. And you have to write it to keep up with it at the time. Absolutely. So I had always journaled the day, but now I'm journaling the date and time. Oh, that's smart. So I go to my mailbox to check my mail and there's a check in the mail and I, so this was a compensation check from our school district. We had not had a pay raise in eight years. We'd finally earn the pay raise. And so I thought it had been automatically deposited in my account a month ago because I, I had automatic deposit. So when I saw the check, I was like, wow. <laughs> Surprise. Cool. I, I thought that money was <laughs> already in the bank. yeah. So I open it up and it's a check for just over $1,300. Wow. So I'm, I'm walk, you know, at this point I walk inside, I open up my laptop. I'm like, I have to journalist that this is God's sign. I mean, yeah. I just bought a $1,300 yeah. ring and next day I get a check for $1,300. Out of the, the blue. And the you blue. weren't even expecting wasn't, it all. Wasn't, no. So as I'm journaling, I wrote the date, time, 3.16 p.m. And again, revelations falling like rain. So I'm just chuckling with God. I'm like, let me guess, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Only you can turn this into a prof And then before I could even get the words out of my mouth, I go, oh, my God, Joshua 3.16. Oh. So I open up my Bible. I turn to Joshua 3.16. And this is so uncanny. Yeah. Um, because in the middle of the scripture, it changes verses. You know, 95% of the time, scripture, like line 315 ends with a complete sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it says, and Joshua stepped foot in the Jordan River, and literally in mid-sentence, it switches to 316. And oh. it says, and the rivers parted <gasps> and drove up in a heap. And I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. God just said, if you buy the ring, I will part your joint. I mean, I was flipping out. Oh, Absolutely wow. losing it. So I spent the next 10 days praying like crazy, saying, God, you need to give me the strength to go back and and make a move on this woman because 
if I do, I'm going to have to propose to her. Maybe not the next day, but I can't play around. Yeah. If yeah, I'm yeah. in, I'm all in. Yeah, yeah. So I spent 10 days building up the strength of it. I finally leave uh, flowers and a note on her doorstep. And, uh, at like, and not the ring, just the flowers. And right, the note. right. Okay. Just okay. explain saying, hey, I never anticipated this journey that God would take me on. And then I waited. And, and this was about midnight. So I did it in the middle of the night so that when she woke up the next morning to go to work, I'd be there. So I waited till like 8 o'clock at night the next day. I mean, you can imagine. Oh, uh-huh. I know. It's like how it... <laughs> so finally about 8 o'clock, I get a text. I'm taking a walk. I mean, I'm literally taking my third lap Doing around laps. the walk. Because I'm just, I'm so anxious I can't sit still. Finally, the text comes. And it says, God has spoken loud and clear. Please never contact me again. Whoa. And there are moments in your life... <laughs> Or you like game over. This, I mean, has everything been a lie? You know, you just, I mean, the only thing I can correlate it with is, it's like the story of Julius Caesar where his friends come up from behind him and stab in the back. It's like, yeah, yeah. You took me yeah. all the way here for that. Because you had revelation after revelation after revelation. Uh, yeah, a whole journey, a year and a half every, journey. Everything lined up. Not to mention my divorce. I mean, you line everything up. At yeah. this point, it just, it was nothing short but a dagger in my back. I just. Yeah. Probably kicked the wind out of you, too. It it, yeah, it just uh, killed me. I mean, I just, I spent days just reeling. Did you question God? I know that, I think a mm-hmm. lot of people in the wilderness, they get this promise and then. It just yeah. doesn't line up, and you're like, I don't get it. Oh, I, I absolutely understand. question God. Absolutely. Or even you hearing him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, am I even hearing him right? Oh, yeah. I mean, as much confirmation as I had, at that point, you have to say, am I just the crazy guy from the movie The Beautiful Mind? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. so, but at the same point, the word was, there's a breakthrough coming in 2015, but the big breakthrough it's coming the next year in 2016. So at this point, it was early August 2016. We still had a few more months left to the year. So I'm going to fast forward a, a couple months. Now it's uh, September. I forget the exact date. I should have looked this up before I came here. Now, to give you a little bit of context, the day before I had that journey where I'm wrestling with God for two hours, the morning of the 40-40-40, I went to this random Bible study. I had no idea why I went there. I didn't know any of these people. And they're going through a book in the Bible. It's one of the obscure books. I forget what it was. I want to say Ezra and Nehemiah. It's one of those. But the, Minor prophet ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the premise of the, the story, the premise of the Bible study was, if you build my house, I will build yours. Oh, I like that. Yeah. And it was almost like God planted a seed in my brain. And it did, did convict me at the time. Like, yeah, this ain't for me. It's an interesting story, but it... <laughs> so I had this experience in September where I had such a profound revelation of the finished work of the cross that I wept for hours, hours. It was like a fountain I couldn't turn off. Mm-hmm. And the essence was this, that when Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, what he essentially, what he practically meant for you and I is you are finished. Meaning you don't have to do a single thing for the rest of your life to prove one thing. You have nothing to prove to others. You have nothing to prove to me. I've taken the test. I got an A plus. You're in. Yeah, for you. It's finished. Yeah. And the the, the revelation was so profound. I, I, you know, I understood, I, I, at that time it was so clear. I'd spent my whole life trying to please others, trying to get the attention of others, trying to get people to esteem me, to want to have a relationship with me. Um, to get God's favor, you know, to fulfill God's purpose for my life. I, right. I realized at the moment I spent my whole life running on a treadmill, desperately trying to do something, get some kind of validation, prove something. And the peace was deafening. That's why I wept for hours. It was just a transcendent peace. It was that peace that transcends all understanding where you're like, this is... I never want to lose this. This is the most brilliant 
sense of wholeness and completion I've ever felt. Right. Kind of that sacred moment where you just didn't want to even step out of that moment. Exactly. Yeah. I've been there. But in the days that followed it, it presented an interesting paradox because the word was the breakthroughs in 2015, but the big breakthroughs come in the next year in 2016. Mm-hmm. And by this time, there's, there's just a little over three months left in the year. And I'm thinking to myself, is it possible that the big breakthrough God was talking about was a revelation of something I had all along? Oh, that's good. It didn't feel good, <laughs> uh, but this was the paradox. It felt amazing. Like every time I, right. I chose yeah. to stand that, like it is finished. The piece was phenomenal. The sense of completion, it was that sense like this is everything I'd always wanted. Everything that I ho- always hoped to attain through ministry or through a relationship or anything else I saw, I already had it. That sense of completion. There's nothing like it. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, but that's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair, <laughs> You, God, you never you told me that, that God. <laughs> this is a setup. So I refuse to believe it. So I'd yeah. go back and forth. Yeah. You know. So how did you how did you pull all that together in your brain? Like how did you cuz I know our listeners are probably asking the same thing. Like you've yeah. got all these words. Right. You stepped out in faith. You yeah. did what you thought and what looked like massive fail. Right. How did you reconcile all that or looking back on this now being able to see it in hindsight? It's kind of like when you're dying at some point you just learn to stop breathing you know (laughs) sounds really morbid but the suffering brings you to a place of submission of surrender where i would have never wanted to accept that but at the same time i'm like but we're getting closer to the end of the year and i can't deny this is better i mean I, i i literally like when i really choose to stand on the finished work of the cross on a day-to-day, hour-by-hour level, it's actually better than I was when, when I was in a relationship with this woman. Wow. And I couldn't deny that. I didn't like what I was discovering. Right. Because I had always had it. I just didn't realize the value of what I had. Wow. So it was even more trip. The reason I shared the Bible study the day before was a couple of weeks after I had this experience, I went back and I read the original story from that Bible study. And I believe it was September 9th. I don't remember the exact date, but it said from the ninth, uh, the ninth day of the ninth month oh, of the yeah, day yeah. that you started building the Lord's yeah. temple, I have not stopped building yours. Wow. Ooh, we got to get that scripture. Maybe we'll put yeah, it in the show Yeah, that would be notes. good. Because the yeah. date, the date yeah. in the scripture was the exact date I had that epiphany. Oh, wow. So I mean, matched. I even created an altar. I, I literally took 12 <laughs> stones. I literally went to these different places where I had experience with God. I took 12 altars. I took a note card. I wrote the I am finished revelation, wrote the date on it. So two weeks later, when I was rereading the story, I realized, oh, my God, it's the same date in the scripture as think... the day that God gave me the epiphany. Wow. Again, it's just one of those wow. Moses at the burning bush moments where yeah. you're like, he's still on the throne. Yeah. I don't understand this at all, but he's still on the throne. And things are still lining up even though you completely don't get it. But yeah. on some level, it's deeper, and so you keep moving? You keep going because, you, you for one, it's a phenomenal story. You, yeah. know, you, you really start to feel like Abraham. Yeah, It's just you know that the rest of the world just sees you as that crazy old guy named Abram. But you know in your heart, you're Abraham. This is, this is God who took you on this journey. Right. Right. So um, I continue to believe against all hope all the way up until the last day of the year. And so we fast forward to December 31st. I'm going to a New Year's Eve party, hoping to God there's some woman, <laughs> mysterious woman who pops it out of the blue. Like the big breakthrough. <laughs> yeah. So the last thing I journaled before I got the door, I just got this creative epiphany from the movie Dead Poet Society with Robin Williams. Oh, I like that movie. Or at the end of the, the movie, uh, the students step up on their chairs and they say, Oh, Captain, my Captain. So I wrote down, Oh, Captain, my Captain, my eyes are on you. I am yes and amen because you are faithful and true. 
Wow. It's I very like poetic. That. I like that. I have no idea. I'm not a very poetic person, but I felt poetic at the time. I think we're going to write that one down too, because <laughs> that one's so good. <laughs> well, and I had received a prophetic word about a year earlier where I was in the middle of worship and someone said, I see a name tag on your chest and it says, hi, my name is yes and amen. Oh, wow. So yes and amen basically means all your promises are yes and amen. Yeah. It's yeah. a position of faith. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if you know this, but one time I did a word study on that, on that verse. And it says that God gives the yes and we give the amen. So it's like this yeah, tandem that's right. partnership. It's an interrelated relationship. Yeah. yeah I which really love Which is why that. I said, I am yes. Uh, well, Captain, my Captain, my eyes are you. I am yes and amen because you are faithful and true. There's an interrelationship. Yeah. I cannot be yes yeah. and amen if you are not yeah. the faithful and true. Yeah. So with that, I go to this uh, New Year's Eve party, and for the most part, I do a pretty good job at blocking out my mind. You know, until about 10 o'clock at night, now I'm starting to get a little antsy. By 11, I'm really getting antsy. By 11.30, you know, I'm just like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the this big breakthrough is not coming. <laughs> this is not happening. This is not happening. Yeah. So finally, when the clock hit midnight, everyone's like, happy New Year's. I make a beeline to the restroom. And I'm like, Matt, just kill me now. I mean, just, <laughs> I'm done. I mean, there's no kill purpose for living anymore. This last yeah. two-year journey is just one big, fat, effing lie. Yeah. What the hell was that? So I spent about 10 minutes in there because I just, I can't face going back out. So I step out. And literally, like, almost the moment I stepped out, my friend Josh steps up on his chair he puts his arm in the sky and he says oh captain my captain <laughs> no way <laughs> no way and i'm like what what did you just josh say? <laughs> what did you just say that for and he looks and he's like bro i'm an actor that's what i do <laughs> I'm like, you're like no he knew nothing no one knew anything i didn't tell anyone about any of this right i definitely didn't tell him what i journaled before i left right so in his goofy antics, I knew exactly what God was saying. Okay, so tell us what God was saying. What was the translation on that? Well, he was saying, one, that epiphany you had, the it is finished revelation, that was your big breakthrough. Mm. And that was a hard pill to swallow. Because it's not what you wanted. but It, it felt like setup. Yeah. It was yeah. like, wait a minute, I laid down what I had always wanted in exchange for something I had from the beginning. Oh, that's good. Say that again. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I laid down what I had always wanted in exchange for something I had in the beginning. That's awesome. The difference was I didn't realize what I had had. Right. You had that epiphany that... I understood the concept of the pearl of great price. That the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure, but it's a treasure buried. It's a, it's a treasure buried deep in our heart. And you only really come to realize how valuable that treasure is by going on a journey with God. It's it's not something you can really unearth in yourself. Mm, that's good, too. I'm not like saying that. that you shouldn't pursue God and, and, and learn from God, but there's something about God himself taking you on a journey that builds scriptural truths in you in ways that you can't build in yourself. Right. So that was one thing. The second thing I felt like he said, <laughs> second thing I knew he was saying, was that I'm still on the throne. Like everything that you've just experienced, when you're in the bathroom, you're like, none of this makes sense. This whole thing has been a two-year lie. Right, right. It hasn't. It's all been me. And I saw you. And I'm still on the throne. And I'm not done. That's so, awesome. I would like to say that now we get into the, the happy ending, but um, <laughs> we all want that. <laughs> it's it's not. In fact, if you can stomach it, the, the darkest part of the night was still up ahead. Um, I had uh, this experience a couple months later where uh, I was spending time with God in the morning before going to church on a given Sunday, and I felt like He said, "I I want you to be ready to pursue today." He had never said that before. So you like, had no idea what it means, right? I'm like, okay, I don't know what you mean, but let's, sure, let's we'll go fishing. <laughs> so I go to church that morning, and there's this woman across the way that just draws me in. I'm like, wow, 
I want to meet her, which is very uncharacteristic. Well, after the church service, I'm talking to my friend. She's talking to her friend. I just couldn't make the connection. But a half hour later, I'm standing by the back door talking with someone. And she walks by. And I look up. I smell at her. She smells at me. And she's out the door. It's like, dang. Pursue. Go for two. <laughs> so some friends are going to lunch. I go to lunch. And there is a table at the back of 10 people from our church. And she's sitting back there. Ah. So at this point, I, but the only open chair was like four seats down from us. Like, Man. <laughs> Talk on it. This is not, not making this easy for me, look. <laughs> pursue, pursue. So the whole time, I'm like, I don't know how to. She's too far down the table. Right. Finally, she gets up to leave. And I see her stop near the front. There's another group. Actually, two groups from our church. And she's talking to them. So I'm just, I'm talking to a friend. I'm like, hey, I need to go right now. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> so I walk towards the front. And I start talking to the other table. Because it's another group from our church. Yeah. And lo and behold, we literally back into each other. Aww. And I think the first thing she said was, like, you have something in your teeth. It was such an awkward <laughs> introduction. And we talked for like a minute. I told her my name. She told me hers. And, and it was done. I'm like, God, <laughs> this is the one. I've had three opportunities. Strike one, strike two, strike three. Can I get a little help? So I had been invited to, uh, I think it was the Oscars or the Grammys, but there was some awards night uh, that some friends were doing. I'm like, maybe she'll be there. I don't know, God. But I'm I'm walking to the Whole Foods across the street to pick something up for the party. And I'm just venting. I'm like, God, you have to do something. You cannot give me a word. Be ready to pursue. I've tried once, twice, three times. Nothing's happening. Can I get a little flip and help here? And I'm praying this for 50 minutes straight. It's, I'm yeah. like a broken record praying the yeah. same thing over and over. So I'm walking back to my car, which was right in front of the restaurant I ate at. And one of my friends runs out of the restaurant and she says, Rob, the phone's for you. I'm like, wait a minute, your phone is for me. She's like, yeah, it's Leland. I'm like, I don't know Leland. I've had like two conversations with him before. She's like, well, he's he's trying to get hold of you. Wow. It's like, this is what I said. Pick up the phone. It's like, Rob. Rob. Hey, <laughs> surfer. Dude. Baby. Like, uh, <laughs> bro, so I've got a couple ladies here. We're driving up to the coast, but I need a second guy. Wow. And so my first thought was like, oh, God. <laughs> but then my second thought was, wait a minute. What if? What two women is he talking about? Oh. So I'm like, well, who are you talking about? And he said her name. Oh, my oh. gosh. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. But then you don't oh know at this point if which gal he's going after. No, I don't. No, I don't. I don't. All I know is I have to follow. It's like, again, the Matrix, follow right, the white right, rabbit. Right. So about 15 minutes later, he pulls up. He's in the front. He's in the driver's seat. The other girl is in the passenger seat in the front. And this woman is in the back seat. Wow. So we spend the whole trip up to the coast talking. Just How the two fun. of us. We walk up to the sea cliff. We watch the sunset together. Oh. We walk back. We talk the whole way back. I'm driving home that night. I'm like, stunned. Absolutely. I mean, this is it. I know with 100% certainty, this is it. This is the resurrection. This is, this is the oh, resurrection Isaac, of my Isaac. Right. Oh, Isaac resurrected. Yeah. Okay. okay. Different relationship. But I'm like, this has to, I mean, yeah. that's the most divine thing I've ever divine connection I've ever experienced. And I've right. experienced quite a few divine connections. So I had spent a couple of weeks getting to know her at church and gotten her number to invite her to lunch with the church group one day. And then I think the third Sunday after that, there's a guest speaker and she says, some of you have the opportunity today to make a decision over the next 24 hours that can alter the course of your life. Uh-oh. Well, I heard that. I'm like, it's on. <laughs> like Donkey Kong. I am asking her out tomorrow. I don't know if this applies to me, but you can bet your yeah. um, that, I'm, that I'm going to respond to that word. So a few hours later, I'm going to uh, a church home group. And as I'm leaving, I pat my friend on the shoulder to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. A guy who, ironically, two years later became my roommate. Oh, wow. And he looks at me and says, Rob. God just told me, 
Your wife is coming. Uh... <laughs> so, you know, before we even go on our first date, I'm like, she's the one. This, she's the one. This <laughs> this is unreal. So, the next week, I'm trying to remember the timeline. Maybe maybe this was. The week before, I'm sorry, my timeline's a little mixed up, but it was right around this time. No, it was that day because I was sent a lunch with her and a group of friends, and my the, the guy who gave me that word in January 2015, like, Abraham, I'm going to send you oh, to a foreign yeah, land, yeah, yeah. texts me. He's like, God, I have to meet with you. Uh-oh. God just gave me a prophetic word for you. You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> so I literally, I said goodbye to the group. I said goodbye to her. I walked across the street. We met at Starbucks, and he's like, okay, here's the word. I saw the word AM PM and God said your your PM has just turned to AM. Your midnight hour has struck. Wow. wow. But the darkest part of the night precedes the dawn of the new day. Oh, that's a hard word to get. And again, it was like the original word, but first you're gonna have to lay down your Isaac. I'm like, excuse me? Say that again, because I think that's really powerful. Say that one again. He said your night has your your midnight hour has struck. It's now 1201, metaphorically speaking, but he said the darkest part of the night precedes the dawn of the new day. Wow. And I'm like, no. No. No, I'm asking her out tomorrow. <laughs> God has just confirmed this is the one. No, 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 I mean, I fell in love with my wife to a good degree. I fell in love with this other woman, but there was something very unique about this relationship. She was a godly woman. I mean, she had been on an Abrahamic type journey that I was now in the midst of. Hmm. So was she on the tail end of it? Yes. Wow. Wow. And she was a phenomenal, phenomenal woman of God. <clears throat> but at the same time, little by little, I came to realize she was stuck. And over time, we began to talk more and more about what that was. And it turned out that she had dated a guy for a year. They had gotten prophetic indication that they were, God divinely put them together. They got engaged. They were convinced that God put them together. But it didn't work. It didn't work. It was kind of like me and this other woman. Where right. She's just like, right. I can't, I can't, there's a sliver in my, I can't do this. This right. isn't going to work. Right. And so they broke up. And so I came to realize that our first date was about a year after that relationship ended. Okay. And I came to realize she she was still stuck. So after about four months, I finally got to the place I felt like God's like, you have to lay this down. Again. 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 How many is this? Like three or four? <laughs> oh, I'd rather not count. <laughs> but, uh, you know, on one hand, I resist. On the other hand, I'm like, I think this is our only hope. Because as long as we're in relationship, like she just needs to be alone with God and really hash it out and figure it out. Bring resolution here. Yeah. So, you know, we were having dinner one night and I told her, I said, this foundation isn't going to hold. I said, if this did lead to marriage, I said, there's too many cracks in the foundation. I feel like someone who's been on 25 job interviews and I still don't have the job. And I'm not putting pressure on you. I'm not saying like, you need to decide whether, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. but I, I can tell you're still stuck in the past. Yeah. I mean, you've told me, you've yeah. confessed that this is true. Right, right. And I just, I, I, I don't have any kind of security because I know it's like you're enjoying the journey, but this isn't going anywhere. As long as there's an unresolved issue with this last relationship, we're running on a treadmill. We're going nowhere. Right. So you let her go? I let her go, and wow, you know, that must have been hard. When I shared that with her, she had been a rock. I mean, this woman had the strongest physical and emotional boundaries of any woman I'd ever dated, because she knew she was stuck and she knew she couldn't afford to open up that door. Um, but when I shared that with her, tears started to roll down her face, and she turned her face, and I could tell she was, you know, taking deep breaths. Is like, stop, stop crying, stop crying. Don't let her see this. Don't, <laughs> let, her see, don't let her see that your wall came down. But when I saw that, I'm like, oh, my God, I finally saw the truth of how she felt because she would never lead me on to believe anything. Right. She was right. very unemotional. 
for a reason. But we left with the idea that she was going to continue praying about it. This was not, we were not necessarily closing the door in our relationship. We were more shelving it. More like taking a break. Both. I mean, we, we were closing the door, but it was with the idea that she, you know, she was going to pray through this. And were you, was you like your expectation with all the prophetic words you had, was it, okay, we're just going to take a time out. We're going to each seek the Lord and then we'll probably end up coming back because the, the prophetic words were so intense. You know, it was more of a closed door because I didn't, I'm like, I had to let her go. Mm. Because that was the only way for her to really find the resolution she needed. Okay. But at the same time, I knew God was going to resurrect it. I knew it. I knew it. Um, and about a month later, you know, my friend, who was also a friend of hers, asked her. And, you know, she probably shouldn't have told me this, but she did. She said, hey, Rob, you know, I talked with her. She's going to church. And I said, so do you still think there's hope with you and Rob? And she said, she said, Rob, she didn't even hesitate. She's like, yes. Mm. And she's like, well, what do you mean? She's like, I mean, that I praying through it every day that's my main prayer priority right now wow so about a week after we broke up um i went to my old church harvest rock church and when i sat and i hadn't been there for years but when i sat in the pews and the church service started it was so uncanny because i'm like that was actually the auditorium i had been married Oh, me wow. and my ex-wife had actually been married on that stage. Oh, wow. So it was the first time in years that I was looking up at that stage. And the sermon starts with this video presentation. And there's these group of people building this art piece. It was mysterious. You couldn't tell what yeah. they were doing. Yeah. And then towards the end, you finally start to see it's like a, a metaphor. And so finally when the video ends, this art piece, this humongous canvas comes down from the sky and they unveil this art piece. And so I'm looking at this, and the first thing that captures your attention, the main centerpiece is a tree. Mm-hmm. And there's this darkened sky with all these stars in the sky, but you realize it's not just stars in the skies, it's a map of the planet, of the Earth. Oh, wow. And then I look closer at the tree, and I see two faces in the tree. And I recognize it's a man and a woman. It's hard to tell. It's one of those where you yeah, have to look yeah, closely to see yeah. it. There's a face Sounds of a cool, man though. and a face <laughs> of a woman, and their noses are practically touching within the middle of the tree. Wow. And I realize, oh, this is a metaphor for marriage. This this art piece is a metaphor for God bringing two people together and calling them to the nations. Oh, wow. Now, before mm-hmm. I tell the last part, I have to go back because I forgot this. A month before we broke up, I went to Ecuador on a missions trip. And there was a lady from Ecuador who prophesied over me. And she said, God says you are so ripe for love. Mm. And he says, I'm going to bring a relationship into your life that's going to that's going to restore every area of your life. Wow. Or you 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 are ready for a love that's going to restore every area of your life. And then she said, God wants you to know that you are in the palm of his hands. Wow. So going back, I'm looking up at the stage. I got married. I'm looking at this art piece. The two faces converge in this tree, which is a metaphor for God bringing two people together to be called to the nations. And I look down and under the tree, the the tree is planted in the soil, which is resting in a hand. Oh, wow. God's hand. Yeah. And I just about lost it again. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. And and that word from Ecuador came back to me. You are in the palm of my hand. You are ready for a love that's going to transform every area of your life or restore every area of your life. So at that time, I, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that God's going to resurrect this thing. So I was sitting next to an old friend. I saw an old friend there. We sat together and we were going to get lunch. So I went out to my car to drive to the restaurant and then I realized oh shoot I never took a picture I have to capture I, I need that yeah, picture yeah, yeah, on yeah. my phone that would be cool. so I texted him I said hey can you take a picture of that for me yeah so he texted it to me and the time stamp of the te- of the text was 2 22 p.m. Mm-hmm. 
And so, you know, I had to go to lunch and, and I didn't have time to process. But when I got home, I just felt inclined to look up Genesis 2.22. Sure enough. Sure enough. Don't you love those? Gosh. <laughs> sure enough. When you're paying attention, there's so many cor- correlations with those. It says, and God took Eve out of Adam's rib and brought her to the man. Mm-hmm. Now, as dumbfounded as that was, it's even more powerful than that because then I felt inclined to look up Matthew 22, 2. Mm-hmm. Again, 2, 2, 2. Right. And the scripture says, the kingdom of heaven is like a wedding banquet that a father prepares for his son. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. And you, you know, you experience these things and, you know, one thing to, I need to be clear about the wilderness, it is death, but it is the most glorious experience you can imagine. I mean, to have experiences like that with God, there, there, there's no words to describe it. There's nothing in this world. There's nothing this world can give you that can compare. It was such an intimacy. Oh my God. It's, it's. Yeah, because you realize, oh, my God, I am a modern day Abraham. No one else sees it. I'm the only one. But he yeah. he sees it. He knows yeah. it. He's yeah. the author and perfected of it. And he's going to finish what he began. Right. So about two months later, I'm at church and, and church has just been painful. At this point, I'm like, I have to stop going because it's just too painful to see her. Mm-hmm. When I talk to her, she's just completely emotionless. I had this experience two times in the same day, two times in the same church service. I'm talking with someone and I overhear someone prophesy over her. God is saying, it's time to let go of the old and embrace this new thing he's doing. I overheard two (laughs) different people. I was so close. I wasn't talking to her. I was just talking with someone. She was talking to someone. Twice I heard someone prophesy the exact same thing. I I mean, how do you deal with that? Yeah. I'm like, God, you've given me like 25 cents. There's so much I haven't shared with you. Yeah. I'm like, just give her one. Just one. <laughs> I've been on this journey for like nine months. One freaking sign, God. You are killing me. And the irony was she was stuck in an old relationship that she felt God had said was from her. Oh, wow. Wow. So the next two months was was Brutal. arguably the, the darkest part yet. Just insane contradiction. I'm like... I was so tempted to walk away from God. I'm like, this and is, I, I want to just pause there because I think for our listeners, a lot of times the wilderness, that's what happens. You know, God will yeah. tell us one thing and then we have an idea of how we think he's going to come through on that word. Right. But then it's the exact opposite and it just doesn't make sense. It is the exact opposite. Yeah. It's not even a little off. It's like, no. this is way the opposite of what you just told me and I don't get it. So I spent the next two months believing against all hope. That must have been tough. Finally, the first Sunday of the new year, 2017, no, 2018, January 2018, I'm at lunch with some friends, and she walks in with another guy. Which guy? Okay, now you're going to have to tell us which guy. <laughs> That's the going question. And yeah. I had to eat for a whole nother hour in the back of my head going, who is, is this, this guy? guy? <laughs> So when we were done and, and she left, I turned to my two friends who, who I knew were good friends with her too. And I'm like, you have to tell me, what do you know? And they both gave me this look. I knew the look. I knew oh. what was going to come out of their mouth. They said, Rob, we told her. We said, you have to tell Rob. They said, it's her ex-fiance. Oh, wow. They're back together. That must have been tough. It, beyond tough. Again, it was like Julius Caesar, Julius Caesar <laughs> dagger in the back, part two. In fact, I literally, two. <laughs> I literally had a dream three weeks later where I was conducting a symphony of praise. And someone came up from behind me and put a dagger in my back. Wow. God foretold it before it happened. Take two. Wow. Dagger, the sequel. <laughs> and, you know, that's the kind of experience... 
I mean, I'm not going to get into the details, but I literally had an experience a few days after where it was like, it was like I came face to face with the devil. It was like my 40th day in the wilderness where he was like, what more evidence do you need? To walk away. To walk away. Yeah. What, what yeah. are you holding? Yeah. He has failed you in every way. He is a liar. He is a manipulator. He, what, what are you waiting for? Yeah. And I'll just have to share the story at another time because of our law. You know, we just don't have enough time here. But what I can say is it brought me to the end of myself. And I'm going to try to summarize this last part in the next five minutes because this, this is where we now come into our promised land. Yay. <laughs> Let, let's hope I can cap this in five minutes. So a couple months later, I had this epiphany of... The Israelite of, of the Israelites stepping into the Jordan River and Jesus calling Peter out of the boat. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I saw that, I went, oh my God. In both cases, they had to step out of the water. Or they had to step out of the boat. They had to step onto before. the water before it would materialize. Yeah, before. And when I saw that, I said, oh my God. God is asking me to step out of my teaching career. My 13-year teaching career with good pay and good benefits and right, right. paying the mortgage. Now, he had already put in my heart, this was three months in the making. In fact, I'd already started writing a book, which was my life story, a story of a modern-day Abraham, which I called A Love Story Only God Could Write. <laughs> and he confirmed it through at least three or four different prophetic words Okay. before this. Okay. And a friend had been telling me for, you know, up to a month before, and he's like, Rob, if you're really going to do this right, you have to step out of your teaching career. I'm like, that's insane. But when I had this epiphany, I was like, he's saying, if you really want to go into your promised land, it's like, my God, how many sacrifices do I have to make? Up? <laughs> it's like, I'm losing count. <laughs> so I spent a good two, three months praying. Finally, on July 2nd, 2018, I sent him my resignation. Now, I had had a dream on Christmas Day the year before, about six months prior. It's a three-part dream. And the first part of the dream, it was simply the Apostle Paul's con conversion experience where Saul turned into Paul. Mm -hmm. The second part of the dream, it was a classroom. And the teacher turns to the student and he says, can you please define for me the word activate? Oh, interesting. That's it. Interesting. Can you please define the word activate? The third part of the dream, I'm driving my car down the street and I drive it into the side of my house and it cost me twenty thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand dollars, I think it was. Wow. And I didn't like the last part. So I'm like, the first part's <laughs> intriguing. The, the first part's awesome, the second part's okay. intriguing, the third part I don't like. So I yeah. just kind of shelved wrote it. it down, <laughs> shelved it, enjoyed my Christmas with my parents. Um, Isn't that funny how we do that? It's like, I like this one right, and I'm right. going to shelf the rest. <laughs> I don't want to listen to this one. So I sent off my letter of recommendation. Uh, resignation, what about writing right? the book? Resignation? My resignation letter. Okay. And I, I wrote the book, set a deadline for November 5th at 5, uh, 5 p.m. I had a vision. This I, I'm like, I'm going to do something no one has ever done before. I'm going to write my life story. Not years after God has fulfilled all the promises. I'm going to write my life story believing that he's going to finish my story before I finish this yeah, story. Yeah, I did the same thing. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. And now we're having this conversation know, on really. this podcast. Yeah. Go figure that. Um, Je Jehovah Sneaky. Um, so I wrote this all the way up until the last moments. And I remember sitting in my bed, literally I finished it. on that exact date, November 5th, 5 p.m. It's 4.59 p.m., laptop in my lap. I mean, I could spend hours talking about this whole experience, but it finally hits 5 p.m. and I write the last three words of the book. It is, is finished. finished. That's awesome. And then I went to Outback State house to have a steak with the lord I just sat there saying god once again this crazy effing journey took me nowhere it took me right out of the middle of the Atlantic ocean to drown and die what that but but what was weird was it wasn't like that it was actually quite peaceful it was almost like 
those last three words was my tombstone. Wow. Where I realized you don't actually go into your promised land. You don't actually come through your Jordan River. You actually have to die in the Jordan River. Christ in you, the hope of glory, Mm -hmm. comes out on the other side. That's a tough journey. So uh, a couple months later, old friend, he was a mentor for like eight years, emails me, said, I had a dream about you. You were... uh, you had received a brand new burgundy red BMW 318i. Wow. Very specific. <laughs> yeah. It was a small eye, not a big eye. And when I saw that, my first thought was Galatians 2.20, I no longer live. I'm the small eye. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live, I live by oh, faith. Oh, wow. That's awesome. But I connected to the dream I had Christmas, you know, just over a year earlier, actually almost exactly a year earlier, where I drove my car into the side of my house, and I said, oh, my God. The car was my ministry. The $25,000 is how much I had in my bank account when I quit my job. I dwindled it down to nothing. Wow. I actually had to borrow some money from my dad to get through. Wow. The, the second part of the dream was, can you please define for me the word Activate. Yeah. When I sent that resignation letter to my principal, I said, God, I'm trusting that when I press the word send, I am bringing myself into my promise line. Like this email will activate. Wow. I didn't That's use awesome. those exact yeah, words, yeah. But, but that was the really, concept. Yeah. And then the first part, Saul's conversion to Paul. And I recognized, not that I was a persecutor of the church, but that I had now crossed over into what it means to be a disciple of Christ. Wow. Like, my life is no longer my own. And so, like, two weeks after that dream, I was asked to come in for an interview. I got hired for a job teaching 11th and 12th grade U.S. history, government, and personal finance at a Christian school in North Hills. It, it's, it, it was, it's been my dream, John. I absolutely love it. Wow, that's amazing. But more than that, um, there's a whole nother side story I'll have to share another time. But while I was writing that book, God began to pull back the veil and show me his bigger plan for America at large. Wow. And this has been my promised land so far. It's been going on a journey of not seeking the fulfillment of my promises. But God's dream of bringing this nation into its promised land. Oh, wow. And again, I could take a whole other hour yeah, podcast yeah, yeah. for this yeah. alone. But I think I'll just end on this note. I don't really pray for my promises anymore. I don't try to bring them to the past. I don't even really think about them. I mean, every now and then it, it scratches the back of my mind. But I have become so... I have so much entered into that rest of recognizing this is not my life anymore. This is his agenda. That it is a peace, consistent peace I've never known. It's a sense of purpose like I've never known. Mm -hmm. A sense of identity like I've never known. Mm -hmm. A sense of freedom that I've never known before. Wow. But this love story only God could write has still not been completed. <laughs> I think we're all so we're working. all you waiting for the happy ending. This is your point to go, what? Why did I listen to this? Why did I listen this to this podcast? This was the worst choice I could possibly, no, no. Listen to this whole podcast and I want the happy story. God happy has done ending. an amazing amount and I don't regret going on this journey. He's not done yet. No. I know he's yeah, not yeah, done yeah, yet. Yeah. For sure. But there's more to the story. Wow. That is like an amazing story. So I know I have a feeling that a lot of our listeners are going to relate to you, especially that every step of the way you were doing the best you could to, you know, pursue or do this or do that or buy the ring. And then it just seemed like nothing, you know, crickets. It's like, wait a minute, did I hear right? Did I not hear right? So how would you encourage our listeners because they're probably going through the same thing, especially if they're in a wilderness that, you know, God's having them do certain things that right. just seem to amount 
to nothing and yet at the same time it's everything i would just say this i kept going back and forth it was like a ping pong match for years between i am abraham and i'm the crazy guy from the movie a beautiful mind with russell crowe <laughs> And you don't know which is which. When you have those experiences with God, it's like, oh my God. This is, this is, it's like my story is written in heaven. I I've even had a prophetic word, you are published in heaven. Don't even know what that means. But I believe what it means is this story of love story like God could write, my story is published in heaven. Like people, like people and angel in heavens could literally read my book right now in heaven that's awesome which completely trips me out yeah because it hasn't been published here on the earth and it hasn't been finished here hasn't been earth. finished yeah. yet. the story is not finished yet my story is yeah. not finished yet yeah. but you know abraham's considered the father of our faith and what's what's the essence of his story against all hope he believed mm. to the very end for 25 years i time. spent a lot of time during these five six years Meditating on the day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year, day after day after day, waiting in just complete nothingness. For 25 years, he was just that crazy old guy, Abram. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so are many of us. <laughs> <laughs> so we believe beyond beyond what we can believe against and, all hope against our hope yeah so is there anything you'd like to tell our readers to close it out today as we're thank you so much for sharing your amazing story yeah. and i'm i'm happy that you've gotten this far and i'm happy that there's more to come so i think if i were to end on one thing there was one prophetic word i got i think back in 2018 actually it was one of the prophetic words about this book some guy said um and he knew nothing about my ideas of writing a book he said the lord is saying that you are a foundation of hope for people you are going to be a foundation of hope for many but god wants you to tell the whole story hmm. because he wants people to know the full cost and the full reward wow of following him You know, you could say, no, you won't lose your salvation. But there really is a divine master plan that God has for all of our lives. And I think in my case, it was pretty extreme. I don't think most people would have to go through the depth of what I've gone through. And yet, I don't want to say that you won't, won't have, have to, to go, go through, through it. Yeah, yeah. Because I've learned that when he says... You know, unless you pick up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being my disciple. Meaning, are you ready to follow my agenda? Are you ready to lay your life down and really be a living sacrifice, is what he's saying. Yeah. And for 20 years, I thought I was, but I had no idea how much sacrifice it would require. But I want to say this. <laughs> the story is not finished. Yes. The second yes. part of, so that they may know the full reward... It's still that's coming. still to be continued. Yeah. 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 And that's what we want to give our listeners hope. You know, yeah. like, okay, it is really tough yeah. and it can be really painful. And it seemed like you're dying a thousand deaths. Yeah. You know, it's not just, okay, I died. It's right. like, okay, die to this. Okay, now die to that. Now die to that. And you're like, wait a minute, but I've already died. <laughs> Isaac is bleeding to death. How is he not dead yet? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so yeah. much, Rob, for being on the show today. We just sure. appreciate your story and thank you for being um, raw and real. That's what we're all about and helping our listeners. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So Rob, I just want to talk to you a little bit. I know that you're starting a brand new Facebook group. You want to talk a little bit about that? It just sounded really intriguing what you're doing. And I want our listeners to know yeah. What you're working on right now. So when I uh, took a leap of faith and stepped down my teaching career, um, God took me on a 10-day detour <laughs> in which he had me um, write a what turned out to be a 26-page research paper 
26 pages. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> he, he, from day one, he put this this prophetic metaphor of the Battle of Marathon where the guy ran 26 miles to tell the people that they had won the victory. So I, 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 from day one, I had this idea of writing a 26-page research paper, which was a chronology of over 50 um, different prophetic people around America foretelling what God's plans are for America, this next great awakening, Wow. which have been foretold by so many. And, uh, believe it or not, our current president, Donald Trump. Now, I may have lost a lot of people right there. They're like, I'm out. <laughs> but this is part of my death journey. He has had me align with a man that I did not like. I had referred to him as a horse's ass. I did not vote for him in 2016. Had no plans and vote for him for 220. But he began to reveal his greater plans for America. And all I can say is there is much more of the story that we have not seen unveiled yet. So that to say, I've been spending two years building this vision. Um, I just stepped out recently. Actually, today was day two of a 70 day prophetic journey, which I have created, uh, which is a face Facebook group I call the Daniel Generation knowing the times and the seasons. Oh, it sounds amazing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put that in the show notes so that people have access to that and okay. can ask to join. And, and are you, so they can ask to join and you would have them in your group, right? Yeah, Facebook. what you would do, you would Facebook me. It's Rob Miner, M-I-N-E-R. So they'd friend you on I'm Facebook. I'm wearing a black leather jacket <laughs> in the picture. I'm stand by the beach. Um, and then once I accept your friend uh, as, as Request. a friend... Request because I'm actually getting a lot of Facebook requests now. I don't know why, but um, oh, it's growing. It sounds like it's growing. So I don't know if there's a correlation, but yeah, you would need to give me a specific note that says, "Hey, please add me to the group." Awesome. Okay, and the name of it again, Daniel. It's called the Daniel Generation, knowing the times and seasons. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you for joining us again today, and for your amazing story, and for doing this brand new Facebook group and helping others. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Wilderness Season podcast. If you need help navigating through your own wilderness season, pick up a copy of my book, A Journey Out of the Wilderness, available on Amazon. Also, continue the conversation online with us by going to our Wilderness Season Facebook page. For resources and events, you can go to www.sherrylynnward.com. If you have enjoyed this show, please subscribe and review our podcast. Just remember, you're not alone.